Okay, uh, we're ready to go here. Let me uh, give you guys the warm up. Which of the following would be the largest particle? Nice. Uh, okay. I think I just know it. A. A. Yes. I'm trying to Yes is two of them. I know it would be. It is A. Yeah. No, it's good. I like when you guys are excited. Yeah. Um, okay, so the answer on this one is A. Let's talk about why. Uh, do you want to explain it? Do you need the board? Okay. Basically, okay, let's do a game. Dom, sorry. Basically, let's go through each one. A, there is potassium, A, B, and A plus, the plus sign uh, would mean that you actually take away an electron, so the radius would be smaller, therefore the particle is also smaller. And so it would be A, if they want to leave you there, like the Na plus, A smaller, A plus, be the same electron configuration as particle. So small, basically. Good. Yeah, yeah and sodium is smaller no matter how you look at it. So. All right. Excellent. I couldn't have said it better myself. Seriously. Yeah, seriously, I think it was better for me. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, that uh, that's going to come into play today uh, for what we're going to be talking about in, in just a second. I do want to just quickly review this. We're going to look at a second slide on this. Uh, Listen up, please. There is one question on this on the problem set on the AS 2.2. Okay. Um, remember that everything in the universe is trying to either get to lower energy or a bigger mass. Okay. Um, and whichever one outweighs the other will be what determines what happens. And you're going to learn how to calculate which one takes over at the end of the year. Okay. So um, these two guys are hydrogens. When they're really far apart, they have high energy. But as they get closer together, the energy drops. And so for hydrogen, they get about 74 picometers from center to center, from nucleus to nucleus. Okay. It's a really small distance. Obviously, these guys are small in general. Um, and it depends on the molecules. So if you have, like, chlorine, that distance might be bigger for a couple of reasons. One is because the atoms are bigger. So chlorine's bigger than, you know, it hangs out as Cl2 just like hydrogen does. Remember Hofbrinkle. Hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and chlorine all hang out in pairs when they're by themselves. Okay. So they'll come together and they form this just right distance. And that's how much energy they lose. That's the change in energy. It's negative because it's exothermic. So when hydrogen atoms get together, they release energy. Okay. So keep that in mind as we go through the next slide too and we look at this. Um, but every molecule... And every two particles that come together have a sweet spot for distances. They don't call it the sweet spot in AP Chem, obviously, but it's really what it is. Okay. I don't know if you should use the term sweet spot on an answer on a free response, but uh, that's what's happening. It's a five. Okay. It's just from saying sweet spot. Oh, sorry. This one we had up last time just heads up. That's right, so you guys have to show close up shop for it. Yeah. Oh, they can't be. It takes time. <laughs> I grab Tom, we run out of the building, and take off every week. Probably in the current situation we're in, they're not going to let anybody on campus. Yeah, because of the COVID stuff. I told but... him he probably shouldn't, and definitely don't do it when I'm asking. Yeah, don't, and he'll embarrass me too, probably. Um, so maybe tell him to meet me at Save Mart. That's where you should run out of students. 
Okay. Bond energy. Okay, guys, really, really, we don't have time to keep quieting you guys down, so listen carefully on this. Bond energy is the energy required to separate atoms. Okay, so to get them apart requires energy going in. To get them together, it's exothermic. They release energy if they want to get together. Okay. Trying to get them apart takes energy. That energy is called bond energy. Okay. Uh, so these are some. These are two terms you really want to become familiar with. And you know, when I say them in your head, you should think, okay, that's bond energy. That's bond length. Okay. Bond length is the distance between nuclei at which the potential energy is the lowest. So that's 74 picometers for H2. That's the bond length. One thing to keep in mind, if those atoms got infinitely far apart, which is impossible, um, their potential energy would go to zero. So there'd be no attraction. The, the, the reason I bring this up is there are, there are multiple choice release questions on Albert that bring this, this third bullet up as if we would ever have this happen, they ask about it. So, one of the questions I put in there, probably. Just in case, yeah. There's a lot of sirens today. Uh, they found Peyton too, okay. It's quite alarming, good one, nice. Keep it up. This all would have been in the chat last year. Uh, <laughs> The chat would always blow up in the weirdest way. And like, like we would be talking about something like out, out loud and having a entirely different conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's mostly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Like most of them. I don't even remember who was in that class. No, I talked to you through the line. Yeah, you did. Yeah. No one else did, though. No, that's because they were just. They were on the yeah, because no one in that class was just bashing through the chat. They were all like, yeah. 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 Yeah, wasn't there one kid that would literally have his camera on and he'd just be playing the movie? Probably. <laughs> Once we got in the classroom, they would like, start shutting stuff down if they were on the school, but then they still had their phones. So, that's why I'm not taking responsibility. There's no way for me to possibly stop it. All right. Uh, so, th again, this graph, they, they love this thing on the AP test now, like Coulomb's Law. They love it. So, just know how to interpret the thing. Uh, they may ask things like, hey, uh, at what point is the bond length ideal? And they may have this letter like A, B, C. So, B would be the ideal bond length, okay, the bottom of that thing. So those are the types of questions they'll, they'll throw at you for that, but they do, they do ask them on there, okay. Um, they get really caught up on certain things on that test, and this is one of them. This, PES, figuring out which element it is from the PES graph. Mass spec is big on there. Um, all that stuff is... Those guys love it on there, right? Those questions. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's the ideal. So the the minimum would be if they were like touching, which is not, they'll start to repel because the nuclei are both positive. So they got to find that right, that sweet spot basically, of ideal, yeah. So one thing about bond length um, comes in, we'll, we'll look at it here in just a second. Um, but with bond length, Like we drew this last time, ethane, which is C2H6, and it's all single bonds. And between the two carbons, there's a single bond. So that's ethane. And then we add eth ethene, which has a double bond, and it's C2H4. And then we add uh, ethine which is also acetylene, called acetylene. 
Uh, one thing you're going to see is that single bonds are the longest bonds. Double bonds are shorter and triple bonds are the shortest distance. So just think the more bonds, the more they're pulled together tightly. And so the, the distance of those bonds actually gets smaller. Okay. So the distance between these two carbons is shorter than these two carbons. Okay. In that. And so that's something you'll see. Uh, and it takes more energy to get a triple bond apart. So just think the sh in, it'll come on the slide, but the shorter the bond length, the harder it is to get apart. Okay. Cause remember they're attracted to each other. So to get them apart, you gotta, you gotta put energy in to separate them. Okay. Um, if you see a couple on campus, it's like very, yeah, they just can't get away from, like they're constantly on top of each other. It's, it's a lot of energy to get them separated. Okay. You should try it sometime. See if you can get them apart. Yeah. Um, but they're, yeah, like the PDA, the public displays of affection, it's just nauseating. Yeah. So, um, My wife and I don't even hold hands That's that sad. Goals. Sounds like a huge problem. Oh. <laughs> you went for the kill right there. I miss Matthew. Okay, so. No. We don't like him. He's a brat. Matthew's the best. No, he's not. He's horrible. All right. So when we talk, sing we're just talking single, double, and triple bonds. When we're talking those things, we have we have a wording for it that we use on the AP test. If it has a single bond, we say the bond order is one. If it's a double bond, the bond order is two. And if it's a triple bond, it's three. Right? Three. Yeah. I don't know. I hope you guys can do it. Did I get fired? No. Okay. No, well, it's Kylie. Kaylee, okay, I mean. She responded. She responded to Kaylee, but not Kylie. Well, because I didn't hear it. Oh, good. Sure. I didn't. I just heard. I'm used to Kaylee. I've trained you to answer to the wrong name. Is in this class. Yeah, yeah, in this class. I'll get your other teachers in here. Well, and do you have Cursilius? Yeah. I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> well, no, like she, like when she, like you have Kayla Powell. I had her last year. Kay, yeah. Her nickname's KK. Yeah, like, yeah. Everyone calls her KK. So when she says Kayla, it's just weird. Yeah, KK is dangerously close to being something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think her last name's not like Krampus or something. So, yeah. Um, you gotta be careful with that one. Uh, <laughs> Tom's nickname, Timothy. I have them in my contacts as my parents' phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom Lex has got your contacts. Do I got an app on What does it say on there? It says at teacher community. Whenever I'm, it's convenient for me. Whenever it's convenient for you. It's on YouTube if you want to watch it later. I'll just get a little nuts. Okay. Uh, the part of red is really important, and it kind of sums up everything we just said in the last couple of slides. Higher the bond order, shorter the bond length, and the larger the bond energy, the more energy it takes to break them apart. So that's a really good, I mean, if you just wrote that down, you'd be pretty good on this stuff. Um, so it's really like terminology right now on this that we're trying to get down without giving you, you know, vocab assignments that are worthless. Um, yeah. Vocab quizzes in AP Chem. That's they don't do that in college. So yeah, they just assume you know what they mean when you take the test. <laughs> That's double-edged sword there, though. So you got to make sure you know. Um, now there are some there are some weird bond orders we're going to look at here on the next. It wouldn't be AP AP Chem without the weird stuff. So uh, we're going to look at some that are like point five something point five. I'm going too fast, let me know. So don't you don't have to write this down, obviously it's in the notes, but just to give you uh, some ideas here. So here's a, a carbon to oxygen bond. We're just looking at the bond, not a molecule, but just that bond, the bond order is one, the bond length's 143, and the bond energy is 358 kilojoules per mole. That's what it takes to break it apart, okay? 
With a double bond in carbon to oxygen, you'd find this in carbon dioxide. You'd have two of these going on. Yes. You don't have to ask. Just take the uh, board and sign off. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Well, it looks like you're carrying like a back. No, no, they wipe it down every time with those uh, wipes. I know, but it's just oh, it's yeah, it's gross. Yeah, I don't have any stickers. I give them all the hoagie. I put that over the freaking thing. He had this case of red cards. Oh yeah. Oh no, the big. Uh, the board. Yeah, I love that thing. Yeah, okay, so uh, guys, triple bond. In this bond order three. Notice the length keeps getting shorter as we go up in bonds count bond order and the energy is getting higher to break it okay so that pattern holds true for all of these nitrogen n2 it that is nitrogen n2 uh it's got a bond length of 110 and 940 it takes 945 kilojoules per mole to get n2 apart um the only way to get in like our bodies can't process nitrogen gas even though our air is close to 80 percent nitrogen holy shit um, so the only way to get nitrogen apart in the air is with a lightning strike. Wow. So when lightning hits the air, it busts apart the N2 in that spot where it's striking. It also breaks apart the O2 and makes O3, which is why there's like a scent in the air when there's a thunderstorm of ozone. Okay. So you get, you know, it really is tough to break nitrogen. The other thing to break nitrogen down are bean plants, legumes. So that's why farmers, uh, one year, we had a, uh, where our office is on Avenue 12 for the ranch, um, if you want to egg it or TP it, um, they planted vineyard there. It was where the cotton gin used to be, and the cotton gin had dumped a bunch of chemicals into the ground, like bad. And so they hit, my dad, when I was working out there, we had to amend the soil, meaning we had to put chemicals in it to get it, you know, basically cleaned up. The other thing they did, or we did, was we planted, like we had the, the vine rows. This is a horrible vine. And between those vine rows, we planted bean plants in the row. They let them grow to, to basically get to the point where they were making beans in the plant in the row. And then they took a tractor and dissed it up. And that helped get more nitrogen into the soil, which it needed. And so that's a natural way to put nitrogen in the soil, or you can put nitric acid in there too, which they'll do. And... Uday probably knows more than I do about that stuff. So um, those are ways that we, we can get N2 to break apart, but that bond length and bond energy and the fact that it's a third bond order makes it really tough to break up. It has to be a special plant, like a bean plant or lighting. Okay. This is where it gets a little weird. Uh, benzene. <laughs> the fudge is this thing? Um, so... Awesome. <laughs> what would the formula be for this? How many C's are there? Six. How many H's? Six. Six. Organic chem. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so in a benzene ring, you notice what they're doing? Single, double, single, double, single, double, divided by six. Okay, let me show you how we're getting these. So benzene does not have a single bond there, a double bond there, a single bond there, a double bond there. There is no way to draw a bond that is 1.5 in length or order. Okay, so these are shorter, this is longer, but they draw it this way because we, we again don't have a way to draw it otherwise. So then what they expect us to understand is that it's really an average of the bonds in the C6H6, okay? So we've got our single double, so it's one plus two plus one plus two plus one plus two, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in there. So we just add up all the different single and double bonds in this thing, divide by six, and we get a, a, a bond order of one and a half, okay? So that bond is really, it's not quite as short as a double, it's not quite as long as a single, it's somewhere in between, and we draw the alternating bonds to show that, okay? With organic chem, it's really tough. You'd have to have like a uh, like on a map, well, or on your GPS application on your phone. Um, they don't even do distances. Like, a, you guys really need to learn how to read a map, old school, if you don't know. Um, yeah, well, yeah, you scout. Are you a scout? 
Yeah. So, go Scouts. And, uh, but they have like, a, like one inch equals so many miles or whatever, kilometers. It's kind of the same idea, but they don't do that in organic chem, so they just do the alternating bond. It's not really alternating. Okay. So that would be one and a half on that thing. An easier way to draw benzene if you ever needed to, you don't have to in here, but if you need to in, in organic chem, is to take, I think I've shown this to you guys before, but you notice you've got the double there, single, double, single, double, single. Oh, wait, I did that wrong. Uh, single, double, like that. You could draw it like that, and it means the same thing as what's on the board. They assume there's a carbon at every spot there, and they assume there's a hydrogen there. So they make a lot of assumptions when they draw these, but it's an easier way to get it down, and people know what they mean. Okay. Yeah. The, those we don't care about in this particular structure because they're all going to be a bond order of one. Yeah, so I'm only count in hydrocarbons like this, we only count between the bonded carbons for that. Okay, to do that. And and the other thing is they're showing two different versions of it to show that it's really cyclical. It's not it, it's not a it's not just set like this where because it's not a double and a single, it's one and a half, one and a half. They'll usually show both images of it, like rotated one over to do that. But the hydrogen and carbon is the same either way. No matter how, so I don't usually count it. Yeah. We're, we're not going to get too far into that because it's more organic, but they do bring it up occasionally on the AP test. So. <laughs> You'll get lots of practice with this, too. Yeah. Why? But why? What? Because if you don't roll up wrap or tie around his head. Oh. All right. As long as he has this stuff. Plus, it's not on camera. Um, <laughs> I couldn't get the fruit roll wrap around my head, probably. What? I don't think it would fit around my head. It's like I, triple modern, so I think you can. No. is hydrogen small right okay so with a hydrogen atom and a carbon atom together what's the distance like between those small right so that that's represented by r okay um if we look at the fluorine versus that the fluorine is going to be a little bit bigger so the R is going to be a little bit bigger. And then when we look at C bonded to bromine, just looking at one bond between these guys, uh, the bromine is going to be even bigger. Actually, it's going to be bigger than the carbon. So now the R is really a lot bigger. So remember, as the length decreases, what happens to the bond energy? It increases. So which would be the hardest to get apart? Let me, let me say what I've said in the past. Long distance relationships don't work as good in chemistry. What should be the hardest to get apart? The shorter distance. The shortest distance would be the hardest to get apart. So which would have the shortest distance? Well, you, you're saying that, but you, there's three things up there. Which one? This. How are you? How are you? Uh, from the periodic transfer atomic radius. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all of this stuff we do leads into the next 
unit in here. You gotta know your trends. <laughs> now. Um, you need to know those trends, yeah. What happens is you go down to the atomic radius. That's what I said. No, it's not. I have it on camera. Well, I have the audio. Uh, okay, what about from left to right? Decreases. Right. But hydrogen is one up from fluorine, so it's smaller than fluorine. Okay. Yeah. Even though it's on the left, it's still smaller than fluorine. Okay. So that would have the highest bond energy. Uh, this would have the lowest. CBR would be the lowest. Okay. It takes, yeah, so it takes more bond energy or bond enthalpy, same thing. Okay, remember, enthalpy is energy, guys. Okay. We need a quiz on the trends. Don't yeah. I'm smell it right now coming, like top style. Like, I don't want to get so long story short, CBR would be the lowest bond energy or enthalpy. Okay. CH would be the highest. CBR is like bromine's really big, so it's farther away, which means it's easier to get apart. Okay. Long distance doesn't work. As well. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to calculate this. We've done this before, but let's look at We've done it in first year chem. So the equation is up there. It says delta H equals bonds broken minus bonds formed. So I'm going to take you through this if you're not sure. Um, because it's, it's semi-new for some people, or it's, it's been a long time, or we haven't, you know, covered it for some of you guys. So, um, and it depends on the year. I mean, there's just, there's a lot to it. So, let's, let's just treat it like it's brand new here. So, if I look at our equation, we have N2. If I draw N2, that's got the triple bond. And I can check it. This guy's got eight. This guy's got eight, they're sharing six, okay? And there's only one N2 in that equation. This is uh, making nitrogen trifluoride. Then we've got three, uh, sorry, three F2s, which would have, I'm not gonna draw the uh, lone pairs just for time here, but they would have all their lone pairs around them. So those guys are single bound, okay? And then that's gonna make NF3 which will look like this. It does have the lone pair there. And there's two of those guys. So we've got one N2, three F2s, two NF3s. The reason why I draw these when I get a question like this is so I can see the bonds. So we have one N2 with a triple bond, and that bond takes 946 kilojoules per mole to get apart. Okay, so if it's bonds broken minus bonds formed, I'll set up a little equation here. And for the N2, I'm gonna put 946 kilojoules per mole. Okay, I'm gonna do that first. Then we need to add the fluorine. So there's three F2s, each one is how much? 141? So I'll do three times 141 kilojoules per mole, okay? That's the bonds broken part, the first part. And then I subtract the bonds formed. Now, the bonds formed, there's just those two guys. So what, uh, but we have how many of those going on? That's what you gotta count. This is why I draw it. How many NF bonds are in this whole situation? Is that six? Yeah. Okay. So it'd be six times, what is it? 272? Yeah. Okay. So 
So if you guys in a calculator can put this in, parentheses are really important in this uh, for orders of operation. Um, I use a lot of parentheses when I'm doing stuff. So let me know what you get. You can tell me on there too if you want. This is a way to calculate the change in energy in a reaction. Is it negative? What's the, what's the calculation here? What are we going to get for delta H if I do the math on the board there? I'm going to do it anyway just to check. Come on, girl boss. Come on, Right. Yep. Yeah, it never showed off with I don't know if it's right. Just go in there. Just go in. Doing it. Yeah, with confidence. Seriously, like you got a baseball bat, just gonna beat some dude with it. Are you multiplying six point three? Uh yeah, so in the parentheses, it's there's six of those bonds in all of this. These two NFs, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got whatever the energy is to break one of them has to be multiplied by six. Because there's six of them. To, to, I'm sorry, to come to, these are coming together. So this is the 946 for the N2 that's in the table. There's only one of them. Okay. Then we've got three of these. They're all at 141. Okay. Then it's bonds broke. Those are the bonds being broken because they're the reactants. The bonds being formed are over here because they're products. Okay. So it's basically left side minus right side of that equation that's given to you, okay? If you can do it without drawing them, that's fine, but I usually draw it because I can see it, okay? But that requires you know how to draw the Lewis structures too, okay? So um, once I put in all the, the numbers into this, I end up with negative 263, I think you guys said? Yeah, which is correct. Um, so it's good, yeah. So that means for every mole it takes negative, or it, it's gonna lose 263 kilojoules of heat. So the delta H is negative 263. So this thing is dropping in energy to make this. Now, which side's messier? The left or the right? Which has more stuff on it? The left side, that's more entropy. So it's actually also getting, it's getting more organized doing this, which, is, which goes against what the universe typically wants. And I don't say what the universe wants like somebody that's praying to the universe for stuff. I'm saying it like scientifically, the universe does not appreciate going to entropy, higher entropy, or less entropy. It wants to go to more mass. It should want to go that way, but the delta H is so negative that it'll still go. Okay. So we'll look at how to put those two together later in the year, but we want to, we want to keep talking about that concept throughout this year. So... If I put nitrogen and fluorine together and react them, technically this should happen. It's got a negative delta H, okay? We'd have to calculate the delta S, which we don't know how to do yet, but it works similarly, okay? So um, once you have the delta S, which is the change in entropy, the mass, and you have the delta H, there's an equation to figure out if it's gonna happen or not, okay, at room temperature. So. Um, that's really the goal of the end of this class is to be able to do that. Okay, be able to figure out if it's going to happen or not. Okay. So that's, that's a bond, bonds broken minus bonds form way of getting delta H. Okay, and again, delta H is going to be important because it can let us know if it's going to happen or not. Okay. Um, hydrogen gas, if you burn it at room temp, if you light it at room temperature, it releases, I think it's negative 486 kilojoules per mole. Um, in that case, it also goes to higher organization, which goes against what the universe te technically wants. Um, but it happens because it goes to such low energy, it wants to do it, it'll overcome that. Uh, same thing with natural gas, when we burn that, it's, it's gonna go. Is there a point where this wouldn't go what would have to happen to the temperature in here for that not to light very easily? Really cold. 
Yeah, and it can happen. Like there in the morning when the heaters didn't work in this room years ago, and we were using Bunsen burners to heat up the room. In the morning, I'd, I'd go around and try to light the Bunsen burners, and it was hard to get them lit because it was so cold they wouldn't. They didn't want to start as easily. So. Yeah. It was like an ice box in here in those days, and our we had the old system. This is the newer system, believe it or not. It's the one that's going to fall out of the new? ceiling the minute we have an earthquake. When did they put this in? About five years ago. That's they used to be there and there. There were two units in the. It's like a swamp pool. How do you know you're too old with that? It's going to be <laughs> they went real cheap on this. Like, it was bad. Like we watched them put it in, and it was so many corners cut. That's kind of why I moved the desks out of the center. I used to have desks down the middle, and I wanted to. Well, in case it just somehow decided to fall one day, just just protect yourself with it. I think you're okay. It would go like down there. You'd be okay. This RN maybe general take it. I trust it enough to put RN and Tommy there, so put it over Eric because there's put Eric there. Yeah. Put Eric in. <laughs> okay, I'll be in the middle. No. You could pass the AP test. I don't want to lose you. What? You could pass the AP test. What? No. Eric? Alyssa. Oh, wow. I meant me, not Eric. Uh -oh. well, what are you doing here then? All right. There's still time to save you. Yeah. All right. Coulomb's Law. He's back. We never left. I know. It's so handsome. Um, George Washington. It's French George Washington. So, um, it is what we're looking at now is Coulomb's Law from the point of view, not just of one atom, but of two particles stuck together. Okay? So, for like periodic trends, we look at it as just single atoms. Like we're looking at the atom and what's going on there. Now we're looking at it from the point of view of, hey, let's put sodium and chloride together and, uh, and talk about how strong that bond is between them. Okay. So uh, it says smaller distances between the nuclei lead to stronger attractions. That goes to back to what we were just saying. As they get closer together, the attraction is higher. And that's a function of the R. Okay, so as that R gets smaller, the F gets bigger. It's more attracted. Force of attraction is F, okay? So if I look at, like, sodium and chlorine, chlorine is going to be a little bit bigger when it becomes the ion because it's grabbing electrons. Sodium, as you guys saw in the warm-up, gets a little bit smaller because it's losing electrons. So we're looking at the blue and the green together, that radius between those guys. So it's, it's 1.16 angstroms. Don't worry about what an angstrom is. Uh, I actually can't remember what power of 10 that is. I think it's 10 to the negative 7 or 8. I can't remember. Um, but it's, it's a distance. So 1.16 and 1.67, that is the radius of each of those guys. Okay. If I look at calcium with sulfur, now sulfide, notice the distances are slightly... This one's slightly bigger. Uh, the calcium ion is a little bit smaller than the sodium uh, in this. I don't know why that's actually the case. It should be a little bit bigger. That's weird. Okay. But you'll get the idea that, you know, as you get bigger ions together, they're not as attracted to each other. Now, you might say, who cares? Well, what it does do is allow you to figure out unknown substances if you're trying to melt them. Which would melt at a lower temperature, but the one with less attraction or more attraction? Think before you answer this. Which would melt more easily? But let me ask, let's use these examples. Would this melt at a lower temperature than this? Or would it be the other way around? The bigger they are, yeah, it'd be the other way around. So the bigger the ions in that compound, the lower the melting point, okay? So the melting point of sodium chloride is 801, I think, Celsius. And I'm going to look these up. Because they will ask about this. The bigger the ion, the lower the Lower the melting point. It'll, it'll melt at a much, or not a much lower temperature, but a lower temperature. Yeah. 
So melting point of sodium chloride is 801 Celsius for uh, calcium sulfide. It's negative, wait a minute, that's not right. Oh, that's, okay, that's it. There's another factor in there. It's a bad example, because it's actually higher. Um, but in general, I have a P smaller. Okay, calcium sulfide makes a lattice structure that's different than salt, so it has a higher melting point, but don't worry about it right now. Um, we're going to actually talk about those solids in this unit, but uh, just for right now, ignore it. Okay. Just know that the smaller the distance, the higher the attraction. Okay. If you put sodium with fluorine, that should melt at a higher temperature. Okay. Let me double check and make sure. Yeah. 993 Celsius. Okay. So, so, so sodium chloride melts at 801. Sodium fluoride melts at negative or at 993 Celsius, so much higher. So you saw me try to melt this. It didn't work that day. That might have been a pressure issue. Um, we'll talk about how pressure affects these. Um, sodium fluoride, there's no way I could get it to melt with a Bunsen burner. It's not hot enough. Okay. Uh, propane, I might be able to do it. Propane burns hotter than methane, which is what we have here. I should try that at home. We have a propane tank. Um, but yeah, in general, like our stove cooks things really fast because it's a propane gas stove. Um, if you live in town, it's a methane gas stove. Okay. Why do you think propane burns hotter while we're on the topic? It's proper hot. It is. It's <laughs> Methane looks like this. It's got four bonds. Propane has three carbons in it. Each of those are attached to a hydrogen, which has more bonds. Yeah, propane. Propane has more bonds, which means when you break them, it releases more energy. It burns hotter. Okay. Acetylene burns even hotter because it's got the triple bond between the two carbons. Okay. So doing the calculation we did here is basically the way to figure out which one gives off the most energy when they do that. Yeah. More bonds means it's going to burn hotter usually. usually. Yeah, that's a generality, but it usually holds true in here or in those gases. So to cut metal, you really need acetylene. If I tried to cut metal with this, I couldn't even get it to melt through. It would just, it would just heat up. Yeah, yeah plasma torque, yeah. What does he? Did they figure? Yeah. They said it was orthodontist. Everybody talked about the wire. Well, you did, so. Oh, great, yes, well, it is. Okay, lettuce energy. Lettuce energy. <laughs> lettuce has no energy in it. It's zero calories. So. <laughs> Rabbits get most of their energy from uh, other things. Okay. Carrots have calories in them. Not a lot, but they're sugar and carrots. I wish rabbits were, uh, I wish they were meat eaters. Uh, I know, like they would attack people. So a rabbit ate pizza on accident one time. It what? It ate pizza. Did it get no, sick? No, it's fine, but like, I don't know why it did that. I don't know. Goats eat everything. Goats are literal goats. I love goats even though they're freaking I want to get two goats. I'll eat literally anything. I'm not eating that. They can climb up stuff too. They, yeah, they yeah. can. Like we had a decoration. It was like six feet off the ground. Yeah. They climbed up. Goat jumped on the fence. Eat it. You guys still goats? No, it was a fair amount of goats. 
Do sheep climb? No, they jump though. Do they attack? No, they just like to. Can I train them to attack? <laughs> So Joey or Marvin, those are the names. All right, last energy. This is uh, another one of those, they love it on the AP test questions. Um, so there's some steps to lattice energy. And uh, again, these are in classroom if you need them. So um, I'm going to take you through the steps real quickly of what happens. It's not, um, the, the, the problem with first year chem is, is we leave out so much detail. And we kind of have to because it's, I mean, you're trying to get people to balance equations, let alone understand what's going on with them. And so let's say that we're, uh, we want to get lithium and fluorine to react. In first year chem, we would show this. That would be the equation. Okay. Another way to write that equation would be this. Notice what I did with the coefficients in the second one. <clears throat> what did I do? Yeah, I cut them in half. Good. So that is a way to write that equation that sometimes makes things easier when we're looking at this. Okay. Really depends on the situation. So, the like we look at this in first year chem and go, okay, lithium's reacting with fluorine to make lithium fluoride solid, the ionic compound. Okay, but in AP Chem we actually look at all the steps that have to occur for this to happen. This is the overall equation. Okay, so at this point you're going to look at all these steps and go, man, I should have dropped a week ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe we should have. <laughs> Okay. If you make it through this semester, yeah, you'll be fine. Second semester. Look, it's it's real tempting to let people drop because it gets our class number down. But I honestly didn't feel comfortable dropping very many of you guys. I mean, I think it was going to need to be happening. You probably wanted to drop me. I didn't. Didn't yeah. care. Yeah. So, either way. No, that's a good thing. Wait, like, you can drop people from school? No, I can suggest it to uh, a counselor. Yeah. Um, no, you can take any class you want, even if you're not qualified for it. Like, I could have, I, I could have, like, the kids that do the recycling, if they wanted to take AP Chem, they could take it. Seriously, legally. I Wait, can't stop class it. Is the, the best class, they're like kind of the severe. Uh, you know, they're trying to train them just for everyday life and stuff in that class. Oh, yeah. And sped yeah, they're like very sped and they learn some like helpful skills to get, you know, even get jobs in many cases, you know. Um, but I mean, if they legally want to take AP Chem, they could. There's nothing to stop them. So it's, uh, but regardless, it's a lot of steps. There's five steps, okay, to this stuff. The first thing that has to happen is, and again, these all kind of happen like that when it's going and that's why we always show you guys the overall equation but it's actually broken up into steps okay so step one we usually look at the metal first and it says the metal goes through sublimation sublimation is when it goes from a solid to a gas now another example of sublimation is dry ice which is carbon dioxide as a solid it doesn't melt it goes right to gas okay so we're assuming that we're putting these guys together, they're reacting, this gets really hot, and it goes right to gas, okay? While that's happening, the fluorine, which I'm writing it with the half version of the equation, the fluorine goes from F2 to single F atoms. So the fluorine, which is diatomic, half wrinkle, breaks apart, okay? So that has to happen first. This happens about the same time, but we say it happens second. They gotta get ready to be a compound, okay? The best way I can illustrate this is to think about marriage, okay? When you're dating, that's great, but to really cement the relationship, and I get that 50% of them end in divorce. I get that, and I'm not trying to, to minimize that, but the the main thing is to get ready to be in the marriage you got to go through some hoops like legally medically um we had to go get blood tested 
we had to get all the paperwork put together. We had to get a bank account. There's a lot of setup for that. Okay. So the same thing is true for lithium and fluorine. Fluorine is diatomic. It's a molecule. Lithium is a metal, pure metal by itself, metallic bonding. These guys got to get together and do that. They got to prep. Lithium's got to become a gas. Fluorine's got to break apart. Okay. Because you can't put two fluorines with a lithium. It doesn't work. It won't do that. So then uh, lithium, after it becomes a gas, ionizes, which means it loses its one electron in this case. Okay, if it was magnesium, it would lose two electrons. Okay, so whatever it is, it'll lose its valence electrons. Okay, so lithium becomes an ion now. Why does it have to become an ion to be in an ionic compound? It's kind of a dumb question. Yeah, it's an ionic compound, and they got to have a positive and negative to stick together. So once fluorine gets split apart, it needs to become an ion also. So the two fluorines break apart, and they each become fluoride. So that's where the electron affinity we talked about earlier comes into play, okay? It's going to gain that electron. Each one of them is going to do that. So there's two of them that are going to do that. We end up with two F minuses there, okay? So then... Uh, the formation of the solid ionic compound comes, and that we call lattice energy. Lattice energy is the energy that takes place when gaseous ions become the solid compound. Okay, so they got their preparation for their marriage together into that compound is to become gaseous ions. They got to turn into gas. They got to be ions. They come together. They solidify. Okay, so tomorrow we'll look at a video of that happening with sodium and chlorine. I can't show the demo in here safely because I have to make chlorine gas, which is frowned upon now. So I did it at an AP study session one night about 10 years ago, though, and it was cool. You do it again in our study session. At a study session? Yeah. I did it in the fume hood. It was pretty, I mean, we could barely smell the chlorine. Uh, <laughs> his kids were keeling over, their lungs were filling with fluid, and they went blind. My Oh, it's, well, I don't like sunshine so much, but I like to go to I don't like frogs, though. I like frogs. I had the next second one. Yeah, guys, we take lunch after school today. And I will have the room open only to you guys. So it's fine. What's up? Lunch or after school. And I shorten the test. So the test is shorter by one free response. Yeah, I have a. I Uh, I need to start you guys like 10 minutes after class gets out six period. So, and then you'll have the same time to watch people. Yeah. yeah. I can't do that every day. Yeah. Well, you, you're making it up, so whenever you can make it up, you can make it up. Yeah. Ten minutes after school. I'll put it out on the mind just to remind you guys. Okay. Hey, guys, I got to lock it up. It's not you, it's me. Uh, I don't know Mark Carrion. No, no. Oh, oh, do you have any? Mark Carrion. Now you have to throw. Yeah. Do you have any market? Uh, market. No. Uh, so I don't have any market at all.